Welcome to church, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Thanks be to God for all who joined today's service and also via. How was your day yesterday? Oh, uh, shoveling all day. And very cold too. But today I think it's more colder. It was freezing outside when I uh, came out from my house. And Joy, when she went to Bridgewater this morning, she took my car. Because it's all wheel drive. She thinks it's more safer to go rather than to the I prayed for her when she just left out my house. It's <laughs> for a safe time. And she uh, went very safe and it was good. So, it's time to start our worship and thank you so much for all people who came to our service, even though the roads were very slippery and also very chilly. So let's put our hearts and mind to our worship. Please join with me in the call to worship. Come to worship this day. Bring with you all your joys and sorrows. Jesus is all our glory. Come to worship this day, believing in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is of healing. Come to worship this day, feeling the presence of God. Jesus is the king of who makes Let us all join in the opening prayer. Dear God, we come to worship today to hear your good news, to hear your faith, hope, and all that we have come to your kingdom. We know that you have the year of change and we shape us. Let us all rise and join in our opening hymn number 131, Gather Together.
God surrounds us, we rejoice in that love. Remember this prayer, okay? Let us greet one another in that love and in that hope that we have, in that abiding faith. Let's all say this together one more time. Do you remember? The love of God surrounds us. We rejoice in that love. Okay, let's share the peace with one another. The love of God surrounds us. We rejoice in that love. Let's say it one more time. The love of God surrounds us. We rejoice in that love. Amen. Okay, so it's time for an announcement. So I'll go down and take my mask off. Hello, online worshipers. I'm Pastor Kim. Yes. It's announcement time. <laughs> they're seeing me through here. Yes. I believe there are uh, more people who are worshiping online because of the weather. So I'm saying hello <laughs> again. Good. Welcome to our church, everyone. And like I said in the beginning, thank you so much for coming to today's service. Okay, <clears throat> Saturn of oh, Sanctuary Speaker Donations. I first want to mention this. Uh, Aaron and Janet Mangkwa, they are uh, probably worshiping online. So look at those speakers next to TV and also this one. So uh, Joseph Colorado had donated a speaker for us uh, next to the TV. We have one speaker, right? But for the other side, we wanted to match the same speaker, but fortunately we could not found, uh, find that speaker with the same model, which is selling outside uh, in stores or online anywhere. So uh, uh, thanks to Aaron, he had those speakers and what a good quality, is it? It was better sound, right? So even though they are not here today, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> So now we are evenly matched with the speakers. And now, what's left? The TV over there, right? It's waiting in my office. <laughs> and it will be coming up uh, probably in February. Yes, so we are arranging the dates. So hope that will next. We have our Sunday choir and fellowship time after service which will start, restart from February. Yay! Uh, are we all happy? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes, so uh, I had spoken with our leader and our music director, Mary, and they all were so happy to respond back to me with a yes reply. So from next Sunday, we'll have the choir singing there, and also we'll have <clears throat> the coffee hours. Uh, with the soup and sandwich, we'll think a little bit about that uh, further on, but with just uh, coffees and a couple of breads, it will be okay. And for uh, our safety issues uh, during our services, it'll be great if you can put, still put your masks on like what we are all doing today, okay? Very good. And we have decided this because we are seeing the numbers going uh, down <clears throat> comparing from January, early January. And it really uh, has been in a good shape, but still uh, people are uh, getting these uh, biases, but uh, we all decided it will be okay from February. So thank you all for your cooperation. Next, we will have our trustee meeting coming 7.30 p.m. at uh, February 3rd. So we'll have a hybrid session. So people who can join online, yes, I'll send out the Zoom link. And also people who can come indoors will meet in my office, yes. Uh, worship <clears throat> leader, so next Sunday we have Kathy, who's gonna be the worship leader, and offerings and greeters. Okay, Kathy, good. So <clears throat> please see the bulletins for your names for the other weeks uh, of February too. Great. So, do anyone have any announcements? 
Any prayer requests? Yes, Kathy. Very good. Let's give a big round of applause. Yay! We are a church. We are gathered here together, not just to worship, but to pray for others and to think and share the love with others. So, uh, some of us have been a very long time member of our church, uh, even like that just came into our church we're a big family we're just all here together to worship the lord and to share the peace of christ with each other so like we heard the prayers <clears throat> prayer requests from kathy and also these good news that are coming from the um, cheryl and, and mike um, it is only with our prayers that uh, we need for our lives to sustain. And also, uh, we see these good news, but sometimes there are some hard moments. When will God hear my prayers? So we do have those questions, but that goes on to the sermon series, what I have from today with why. So it's a connection. And I believe God is giving me and also every one of us these kind of uh, connections that we can go forward. Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray and we bow down our hearts and mind together. And uh, we want to first thank people uh, who have survived with this bad weather, uh, with icy snows, slippery roads, and um, just give them safe and secure time all their life so they can uh, enjoy and they can dedicate all their life with you, Lord. Uh, we pray especially for Kathy's dad, uh, uh, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it is a very uh, breakable news for their family to hear this. But Lord, we know and we believe that you are with Kathy's family, and also with every one of us. So please hear our prayers and uh, comfort Kathy's family's hearts uh, so that they can uh, depend and rely onto you more at this moment uh, for uh, Kathy's dad's condition, Lord. Uh, thank you all for bringing each one of us to church and let us continue to have this blissful time together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, children, please come up. We have Laurel, we have Ryan. You can sit here, you can sit here, Laura. Yes. Spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Amen. Ryan? Welcome, one and all. 
Third Lord, Justice Clay, as welcome for the glory of God. Romans 15, 7. Thank you. This is the word of God and for the people of God. We all say thanks be to God. God. Amen. When visiting a friend, uh, you all visited your friend's house before, right? When visiting a friend, we might ask this question. What do you ask when you go to your friend's house at the first? Possibly, can I use the bathroom? Huh? Oh, no. Can I get something to drink? Oh, we might ask that, right? Mm. Would you like something to drink? Or can I get some drink? We ask those questions, right? Yes, I would when a friend asks, uh, questions you, right? Asks you, and then you'll say, yes, I will. And your friend will say, what would you like? What would you like? And what do you have? If somebody asks you, then what will you say? You don't know? Yes? Water. Water, yeah. Let's see. Oh. Mm. What do you have? I have soda, I have fruit juice, I have water. Mm. Which drink would you choose? Laurel chose water. How about Ryan? You're not picky? <laughs> what will you choose, Josiah? Fruit juice. Fruit juice? Yes. Your answer probably depends on whether you're actually thirsty or just want something to drink, right? The number one choice that children make is soda, but nobody says soda here. Okay. Yes. Now I, look at this, soda, 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 oh, that feels so good, no? It's not? <laughs> so itchy? <laughs> I must admit that soda tastes pretty good, yes it does, but if you want something that will satisfy your thirst and provide what your body needs, a soda won't be the right choice. You're like sweating and you're like so thirsty and can you get cup of coke? No, water is better, right? Sodas are high in sugar. Oh. They have a lot of calories, right? That we don't need. You might think that fruit juice would be a good choice, right, Josiah? Fruit juice? But surprisingly, they often contain as much as sugar and calories as Sodas. If you want a healthy choice, the choice is clearly water. Right. Ah, yes, those refreshing waters. Yeah. How much water do you drink each day? This is a good question, right? I like to drink eight cups around the day, but mostly I drink two or three, and I'm trying to work on that. Okay, so you think eight cups of water is enough, right? How about you? I drink three cups a day. Oh, <laughs> one cup in the morning, lunch and dinner? <laughs> How about you? Um, six. Six cups of water? Wow, let's see what the answer is, right? Most experts agree what we should drink about eight or nine cups of water a day. Yes, it is. This is for everyone, okay? Yeah, eight to nine cups of water a day. Of course, that depends on how hot it is and whether we're doing a lot of running and playing, right? If so, we need more water, of course. There are other, other things to drink beside water. Sometimes, like a glass of milk, yes. Pretty much our bodies are made of water. Oh. Whatever, girl. Yes. Yes, sometimes, like I just said, a glass of milk, especially with cookies. Oh. Drinking a milk is better with cookies than water, isn't it? 
<laughs> and I may drink a soda if I'm eating a hamburger. But there is no substitute for water when you are hot and thirsty. The part of the world where Jesus lived was very, very hot and dry. One day, as he was traveling through Samaria, Jesus passed through a small village named of Sky. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, hot and tired from a long, long, long walk, sat down beside the well about noontime to rest. Phew, Jesus was resting. Soon, <clears throat> a Samaritan woman came to the well to fill her water jar. Please give me a drink, Jesus said to the woman. The woman was, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the woman was shocked. You see, in those days, a Jew wouldn't be caught dead talking to a Samaritan. Why are you a Jew asking me, a Samaritan woman said. For a drink, Jesus answered. Let's see, John chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Amen. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming to this well to draw water. She didn't understand that the living water, the living water was to believe that Jesus was the Savior. Go and get your husband and bring him here, Jesus told them. I don't have a husband, she replied. And you are right, Jesus answered. You have had five husbands, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. You must be prophet because you know everything I have done, the woman said. Then Jesus explained to her that he was the Messiah. The woman was so excited, she ran into the city and told her friends, Come and see a man that told me everything I have done. Surely he must be the Christ. Because of what the woman told them, many Samaritans came to know Jesus and accept his offer of living water. John chapter 4, verse 42 says, Rosario, can you read it for us? They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man is really the Savior of the world. Amen. Yes, cool, refreshing water. It refreshes the body. Right? But it can compare <clears throat> to the living water that Jesus gives. Okay? The Lord refreshes our soul. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that Jesus' life and love never run out. It's like an invisible living water. This is always there for we thank you so much for sending Jesus, the living water. We pray that each one here today will drink of that living water so that they will never thirst again. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank <laughs> you.
Today we're going to sing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. So, uh, I really like this song and want to sing it in a really creative way. So, it'll be good if you can follow along as I sing. <laughs>
W-H-Y. Why? Have you ever heard, ever asked that question before? Yes, we all have asked this question called why? 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 All kinds of whys, right? At one point in our lives, and sometimes even on a daily basis, all of us ask why about something. This series will explore some of the questions that you might have about your faith and what you believe about God. We will start with a question today. Why am I here? Thinking of why am I here, let's think of this question first. What is the meaning of your life? What is the meaning of my life? Have you ever wondered why you even ask that question? Cats don't ask that question. Monkeys and apes don't ask that question. Dolphins don't ponder their existence. Only humans have the quest for the amazing meaning of life. And is that a clue to life's meaning? American's favorite sport. What is that? Uh, baseball? Football? What do you think? Football? Football raising? Baseball? Basketball? Tennis? <laughs> I think it's football, right? Football. And the date is coming, right, Joe? Yes, you like football, right? <laughs> Super Bowl on February 13th. Did you know the date? Yeah. Yes? I'm not advertising football for you, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> Why am I speaking of Super Bowl is, let's see. The Super Bowl is one of the most watched sporting events of the year, with over 100 million viewers. And the halftime show features some of the biggest name in music. The show itself is one of the most amazing technical feats ever planned, taking only six minutes to completely set up and all for 12 minutes. The show's designers began preparing for the next year's show right after the current year's game is finished. Did you know that? Mm. From staging and video to lights and sound and every person on the field, it is created, set up to time to perfect accuracy. Every person and piece of equipment has a purpose and a plan. And the show's designer knows exactly what it is and where it's supposed to be. Like there is a designer for events. There is a designer for each one of us. Therefore, to get the answer why, we must find the design of God. When you find your reason for being here, you will find God in the middle of it. So at some point in life, we all ask this simple question. Why am I here? Where do I fit in God's big plan? It's a fair question and one that many people go their whole lives without discussing. Most of us know that God created us, but for what reason? What significance do each of us have? The short answer is that the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed, but what does that even mean? God's glory simply means each of us were created to give praise and peace to God. 
being created for God's glory in our general purpose. But God wants us to discover our specific purpose in God's plan. Imagine a swift army knife. Typically, they contain at least a knife and several other tools that might be useful for different situations. Some knives are small and others are quite large, right? Having many different types of tools and pieces. Its general purpose is to be available whenever it is needed, right? When we need a screwdriver, if there's a toothpick, needed a fingernail or something, it's on there too. And it's a handy tool that can help you out when you need it the most. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever seen videos or any pictures of these spray paint artists who create amazing works of art on the street? They don't just snap their fingers like that, right? And all that paint instantly goes on the canvas? No. They have to work in steps and stages. Each one important for the next step to happen, step by step. What would happen if a spray paint artist was painting a specific picture that needed to be done in a particular order? but suddenly decided to do the colors and sections out of order, hmm. it would not look like the original. Let's think back many, many years before, okay? How long? I don't know. Do you remember when you first learned to tie your shoes? Oh, what a silly question that is. Oh no, Pastor, that's like so long time I can't even how many of you have managed to get it perfectly right the very first time you tried? Of course not. Right? And that's why Velcro shoes are very, really awesome. Right? It's so easy, right? But if you took your time and did the steps in order you were supposed to do, you would tie your shoes the correct way every time. God doesn't reveal God's whole plan to us at one time. But as we take a step of faith toward God, God reveals another part of God's plan. While you were still learning to tie your shoes, there was probably a point where your father or mother or brothers or sisters, whoever, would bend down to help you. Would you shoot back saying, I can do it by myself. Many times when it comes to God's plans, we do the same thing. We tell God that we can figure things out. Even if we don't verbally say it, we demonstrate that we can do things by our own, by the way we act. We don't need God's help. But God says God's plans for us are for welfare and not for good and not for disaster. Let's read again today's scripture from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 together. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with what a strong verse that is, right? Of course, our plans are not for disaster, but they usually end up the way before it's over. Sometimes we experience train wrecks in life, things that we thought were a good idea, turns out to be a bad idea. On a colossal scale, and God doesn't want failure and disaster in our life. God wants us to have a future and hope. But we don't know what the future and hope will look like without God's help. 
every day, God builds in us another step in God's plan. And each plan for each person is different. God wants us to complete the step we are working on before God reveals the next stage in God's plan for us. The plan includes the future. However, we understand the most about the future by looking at the past. Experiences in your past directed you where you are today. It could have been a bad situation as easily as a good situation. It could have been a failure as much as a success. Experiences drive our lives to where we are to go. And experiences are not coincidences. Experiences can co connect the dots of our life. And we should look. Amen? It's amazing what we do not see when we are not looking. You and I are here to glorify God and fulfill the plan God has for our lives. Part of the plan is to what? Discover God's plan. Step by step, listening to God's voice. When we're listening to God's voice, instead of the voices of others who are trying to distract us, God will guide us the peace we are supposed to be. To hear God's voice, you have to know God. To know God's voice, you have to spend time getting to know God. God won't distract us or lead us off the course and plan God has for us. As long as we listen to God. Amen? Amen. We are struggling human beings, everyone. Yes, we are. We do not have all the answers. We are not called to know everything or be everything. Right? It is enough to be who we are. The special child God created us to be. It is enough to believe and follow the Lord Jesus and to allow ourselves to be used to glorify God. And let's all be glad. You are the person. I am the person God made you to be. Who am I? I'm God's child. Why am I here? To be just who I am. Amen? Gracious God, we know it is never too late to be who we might have been. What a joy to be alive and be able to know you in your purposes for your life. We ask you, Jesus Christ, to come into our lives and help us to understand your purposes for us. God, we need you in our life. Help us to know your purpose for our life. We want to take the first step today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Time for offertory.
have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, prayfully. With them we praise you. With them we celebrate the great power that is love, a love that abides always, a love that radically transforms, a love that makes us whole. In Jesus' name we pray. For our closing song, I chose Here I Am. What was our sermon title today? Why Am I Here? That perfect song. Yes, let's sing.
let us go forth, replenished by the grace and mercy of God, blessed by the healing love of Jesus, energized by the limitless power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.